the Jin Khan incident marked a devastating point in ancient Chinese history. The two emperors were treated like dogs in public. The empress was shown naked to the public. The princess was subjected to brutal rape and murder, and the empress dowager was forced into prostitution an astonishing one hundred and five times. Welcome to the untold truth of China. If you like this video, please click thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's hard to believe that the Northern Song Dynasty, once thriving, could be utterly destroyed by a small Jin state to the north. In ancient China. The Northern Song Dynasty, led by the Zhao family, was the strongest and most prosperous economy. The Song Dynasty was among the world's top-ranking dynasties, with a GDP representing 60% of the world's total at that time and a victory rate of 70% in wars and battles. However, why did such a successful and powerful dynasty like the Song ultimately decline beyond recovery? One issue was the lack of focus on building up national defense and the military, paired with the popularity of the imperial examination system, which caused many to aspire towards government positions. The second problem was the unfeasibility of the ruler's tactics. Though Emperor Huizong of the Song Dynasty was a talented artist. He lacked political and military expertise and was essentially untrained in military affairs. It was this vulnerability that allowed the scheming Jin Kingdom to exploit the situation. At that time, the Song Dynasty had two enemies to the north: the Liao Kingdom and the Jin Kingdom. The Liao Kingdom had been oppressing the Song Dynasty, so when the Jin offered an alliance, Emperor Huizong of the Song Dynasty immediately accepted. The Jin even deceived Emperor Huizong into returning sixteen cities to the Northern Song Dynasty after overthrowing Liao. This great offer interested Emperor Huizong, who agreed to the alliance right away with the assistance of the Northern Song Dynasty. The Jin Dynasty quickly captured the Liao Dynasty following their alliance. Emperor Huizong waited joyfully for the Jin to fulfill the promise. However. The news came that the Jin attacked the Northern Song Dynasty, causing Emperor Huizong to panic and announce his abdication. He was not skilled in soldier combat. Thus, he left his son, Emperor Qinzong of the Song Dynasty, with the burden. But Emperor Qinzong proved to be even worse than his father and surrendered rather than resisting to achieve peace. The importance lay in preserving the throne and the ruler's life, as the dignity of the state was inconsequential. In the year A.D. 1126, Jin took over Bianjin, prompting the anxious Emperor Qinzong to send a peace treaty to Jin. Northern Song's request for peace was received favorably by Jin, who managed to extort a large amount of money without resorting to force. During this time, Jin demanded that the Northern Song Dynasty pay significant compensation. At that time. The Jin requested the Northern Song Dynasty to pay for a large sum of money, considering the economic capacity of the Northern Song Dynasty. This payment would consume ten years of the country's financial resources, which they could not afford. The people from Jin State suggested that they would take women as payment instead. The Northern Song Dynasty had no alternative. But to sell their royal women to the Jin Dynasty to reduce their financial obligation. As a result, the women became slaves. Among them, the princess and the queen consort were valued at one thousand gold ingots each, while the king consort was valued at five hundred gold ingots. Other royal women were valued at two hundred gold ingots each, while the royal women carried out a clear price tag. Which is undoubtedly in the face of blatant abuse of the Northern Song Dynasty emperor. However, Emperor Qinzun, who only cared about keeping his throne, didn't bother about these matters. In order to raise compensation, he ordered his ministers and their families to contribute all of their money. Furthermore, he sent people to collect money directly from the houses of the contributors. Even that wasn't enough. 
So the emperor also encouraged ordinary people to donate. This rule punishes people who don't give up their gold and silver. Ordinary people could also expose and report to each other, and whistleblowers can receive corresponding rewards. Despite the campaign's efforts, the money collected was not enough to pay for the reparations. Emperor Qinzong and Emperor Huizong sold over 9,000 members of the royal family. Including empresses, concubines, princesses, wives, and daughters, as well as more than three thousand artisans, to the Jin Dynasty, the Northern Song's royal family, composed of prisoners of war, were escorted to the Jin State and endured immense suffering. They had to endure the bitter cold while poorly dressed, and their basic needs, such as food and clothing, were a luxury. As a result. Almost half of the team died of disease and starvation during the journey. The former luxury of the royal family was replaced with a miserable end. Female inmates face additional challenges as they are often harassed by Jin soldiers during transit. Many suffer abuse and death at the hands of the soldiers. By the time they reach the kingdom of Jin, those who survived were in a deeper hell. Emperor Taizong of the Jin Dynasty. Gave Emperor Huizong and Emperor Qinzong new and insulting names. He also requested the Song royal family to attend the sheep pulling ceremony at the temple where the ancestors of Jerkin were worshipped. During the sheep pulling ceremony, everyone is required to be topless and wear only a piece of sheep skin on their back with a rope around the neck while being led like a sheep during a brutal and degrading torture. Empress Zhu. Who was 26 years old chose to end her life. Those women who survived the ordeal went on to become concubines of the Jin clans, while the rest were forced to work in a laundry that was similar to a brothel. Emperor Gansi on Jiaogo is fortunate, although his father Emperor Huizong and his brother Emperor Qinzong experienced humiliation. He managed to avoid disaster by moving south and becoming emperor without being taken over by the Jin dynasty. However, his mother Wei experienced extreme torture while in the captivity of the Jin Dynasty. She was forced to work in a laundry and be a prostitute, having to receive customers 105 times. Eventually, she was given to Wan Yan Zongxian, a member of the Jin clan, and gave birth to two children for him. At that time, in the Jin Dynasty, women of any status were enslaved and faced destruction. Even the most beautiful daughter. Of Emperor Huizong of the Song Dynasty, Mao Dadiji was not exempted. Initially, she was not subjected to any humiliation. However, after being captured, a courtesan confessed to the Jin that Mao Dadiji was the most beautiful woman in Northern Song. In an attempt to save her own life, the Jin people were thrilled to hear this news, especially Wan Yan Zongwan, the second prince of Jin. Wan Yan Zongwan spoke with Emperor Huizong and Emperor Qinzong directly to request Mao Dadiji. He also insisted that they bring her to his bed. When Emperor Huizong heard this, he didn't hesitate and collaborated with Emperor Qinzong to persuade Mao Dadiji to serve Wan Yan Zongwan. At this time, Emperor Huizong and Emperor Qinzong disregarded their limits to safeguard their lives. In that end, Mao Dadiji was intoxicated. By Emperor Huizong and Emperor Qinzong, and handed over to Wan Yan Zongwan. Faced with everything her family had done, Mao Dadiji felt deeply desolate. Fortunately, Wan Yan Zongwan treated her rather well, and in his care, she was spared from being assaulted by multiple men. However, this situation changed swiftly after living with Mao Dadiji for several years. Wan Yan Zongwan unexpectedly passed away following his death. Mao Dadiji lost her protection and was eventually returned to the Laundry Institute, entertaining those jerkin customers on a daily basis. But her subsequent experiences were truly hellish. After staying at the Laundry Institute for a while, she was noticed by Jin Dynasty Minister Wan Yanxian and taken to his mansion. Mao Dadiji thought she wouldn't have to endure the life of the Laundry Institute any longer, but she soon discovered. That Wan Yan Xin was a sadist with a particular penchant for torture, and thus, under the constant torment from Wan Yan Xin, 
Mauda Digi ultimately died in bed from an anal fissure. A weak emperor is doomed to be unable to defend the nation, let alone protect his own wife and children. An alliance made without foresight led to a shameful tragedy. Not only did it bring about his own demise, but it also involved numerous innocent women of the Northern Song Dynasty, making them the sacrificial lambs of war. It's truly heartbreaking. This is the content of this video. If you like this video, please click thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.